Aburu Boye, bendicion a ti alafia. Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome back. Queen Oset here. Um, today I want to talk about um, the new moon cycle. I apologize for not coming in at the time of the new moon, but I hope everyone did something to set your intention for this new moon cycle. So even though we are out of Libra and now currently sitting in the sign of Scorpio, you can still tap into that Libran energy. Now, honestly, this Libra new moon uh, was a little difficult for me, especially with the current um, global situation, political situation that we have been dealing with for the past several weeks. You know, I pulled out a bunch of my tarot cards to make some sort of comparison and to get a better understanding of what the Libran energy is supposed to be about. You know, it's supposed to be about balance and truth and harmony. You know, it's depicted here in the tarot, you know, the sword of truth and the scales of justice and keeping everything in balance. But I've always wondered what is behind that curtain. Why is this figure so heavily robed in the color red? Red of passion and disruption. Um, why is that figure almost echoing this figure? I've begun to understand that justice is not about equanimity or equality and very rarely is it ever about truth. Justice is more about comfort. This to me is a better depiction of justice. As long as we are comfortable where we are no matter how bad the situation is, then that's our truth, right? And that in turn is justice. Now I may have, and I hope to have, many people come in and, you know, chime in and give me your opinion. See, when I look at these, <clears throat> excuse me, this court card of this King of Swords, he's supposed to be about truth, clarity, and understanding. But, you know, I still get the feeling that there's a bit of emotion and personal comfort that may be at play. You know, I used to feel that the King of Swords, or sometimes I do feel the King of Swords is seeing things as in black and white, you know, no shades of gray, I'm delivering the words necessary, communicating very clearly. But I feel that there may be just a titch of emotion involved in that delivery. You know, uh, this King of Swords, I feel, may weigh his personal comfort in the balance before he actually makes a decision. Whereas the Queen of Swords, I feel, um, she's been through it. You see how upright her sword is? She's rising above the clouds. You know, I feel this Queen of Swords energy as harsh as it may be sometimes is without the emotion simply because she's been there and she could rise above that and really see the truth uh, very, very clearly. Nothing is clouding her vision. She's also coming from a place perhaps with personal experience. Now that may weigh in on her decision, but I don't think that it will be too detrimental I'm going to show you another Queen of Swords from the Afro Tarot. You see, she's quite comfortable in her truth. She's not, it's not just her truth, but the truth of all, the truth for everyone involved. Um, 
And I feel that that is something that was missing these past few days. For me, even Santa Huerte speaks about the, the reality of what truth is. It's very rare when it is dealt out equally. Someone is going to be on the losing end. Is that justice? How about the Queen of Hearts? Now here we have a portrayal of balance, supposedly, between the Queen of Hearts who uses her emotions to mete out her justice and then the King of Hearts who uses that compassion um, to see things clearly. You know, Barbara Moore says, let me grab my book here. What does she say about this? Um, let's see. There are many kinds of justice, some based on fairness, some based on intricate machinations of logic in the guise of laws, some based on mercy, and some on the rule of debt, such as an eye for an eye. In Wonderland, the trial scene that ends the story is a confusing, nonsensical example of justice. On the one hand, we have the Queen of Hearts, who is moved by one aspect of the heart, her own unbridled, angry passion. And then, of course, you have the King of Hearts, on the other hand, who takes a kinder, more merciful approach, being more inclined to pardon people than kill them. So, justice is supposed to be about balance, but I feel that very rarely is it ever. Um, someone always walks away with the fuzzy end of the lollipop. I have depictions of the Justice card from the before, after Tarot, and Tarot of New Vision. So, in the before Tarot, we have Justice, the Justice card is releasing a dove, dove of peace. The sword has been laid down. The sword of truth has been laid down. So I think that Justice would rather approach things from a very peaceful place as opposed to getting to that very aggressive, assertive place and dealing with facts. I think that Justice would rather deal with feelings and emotions, you know, that whole heart connection. Then in the after tarot, justice is asked to step in to meet out a decision between two supposed op opposing people. We have a king perhaps a man of wealth, and we have a common man, someone who looks downtrodden, and justice has been called in to weigh, uh, weigh in on the situation, whatever it is. Who do you think is going to be uh, the winner in this situation? You know, justice is supposed to be fair supposed to be. And then we have Justice of, from the Tarot of the New Vision. And I'm looking at this and it brings to mind the story of Solomon. Yes? You know, he was willing to cut the baby in half knowing that the mother would not allow that to happen to her child that the real mother would speak up. And that's truth. And I think that with what we have going on in our world today, we have lost that desire to seek the truth. What we have decided to do is pursue comfort over truth. I don't want my life disrupted. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to say the wrong thing. But now 
we are at a place I feel where this is the only truth for us. No one escapes this. This is the great equalizer. This is without a doubt non-negotiable. No one escapes this. But it takes us getting to here, I think, to get to the place of clarity that we need. I think we're still in this place. We're still, let's see, where is he? Many of us, we're still here. We want to be comfortable. But something, we're experiencing quite a bit more of these moments now. Little tremors, right? One of these days, though, we'll get to this place. We'll all get on board and understand what it is to be equal, what justice truly means. So, enough of my lecture. Let's get on with some things. I don't want to make this too long. I always say that. So, from my book, New Moon Intentions, here's some things that you can use for your mantra. So, I know last month I had set um, three intentions, and one of them was to obtain three new, three new clients. And I did. I actually did. I got three new clients. I just put the energy out there. I didn't do anything extra. I didn't do any additional advertising. I didn't do any additional um, promotions or anything like that. I think I was just out and about and just talking to people and word of mouth spread and I got three new clients. So it does work. The power of manifestation and I guess the law of attraction, it does work. So here's some mantras that we can employ for this month of Libra. Sample wishes to promote fairness. I want to easily find myself putting myself in the other person's shoes in order to perceive them accurately. I want to easily find myself open to understanding points of view opposite to my own. I want all upsetting preoccupation with fairness easily lifted from me. I want to feel eternally balanced and peaceful. Um, I want to easily find myself relating with others in a tactful, courteous, and cooperative manner. I want to be aware of feeling agreeable and at ease in social situations. We've well, seen a lot of ugly stuff on social media. We need to be mindful. I want the habit of comparing myself to others totally lifted from me. I want all paralyzing indecision lifted from me. I want the habit of always taking an opposing point of view easily lifted from me. I want the notion that I must always be a nice person totally lifted from me. I want to no longer need to experience inner accord with blank in order to have peace of mind. And the reason why I, I highlighted that in particular, you know, it's time for us to stop going along with the status quo. You know, we get into that place where we feel comfortable, we don't want to rock the boat, and then what happens, we end up with drivel like this and like this. When no one says anything, you end up with garbage. So, I put those down there. So, now that we're in this new moon, new moon energy, the moon right now is um, cresting, you know, it's a crescent moon in Scorpio. So, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Write out your list of intentions, you know, light a candle, get ready to bring in whatever it is you desire. I have here your keywords, of course, are gentle, harmony, peace, romantic. Um, it's the air element. This Libra 
new moon is works with the fourth chakra, the heart chakra, and you can use essential oils of rose, geranium, cypress, peppermint, eucalyptus, and thyme. All right. Um, for me, I'm going to be working with bergamot this time of year because that's something that I want to uh, tap into um, for myself. That's a personal decision. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, other mantras that you can use are I'm emanating fairness, peace, and harmony within my life. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff here that I want to share with you. So, today, as I said, and for the next two days, I believe, I'll have to check my moon calendar. The moon is moving into Scorpio. And Scorpio rules my fourth house. My fourth house, which is the house of my father's influence, my mother, my home, my emotional defenses, my roots, my foundation, and my ancestors. Okay. <sighs> I know many people are doing uh, ancestor work this month. Who I am and where I come from, uh, there is no veil. I'll put it to you that way. Um, we do ancestor reverence year round. It's an ongoing process. But um, this month it's more heightened, and I think because everyone becomes more aware and more tuned in. So I have to work on making sure that I stay stabilized and grounded uh, more so than ever. So a few crystals that I'm going to be working with will be aquamarine. That will allow me to stay focused and yet go with the flow. Clear quartz, because it's a great amplifier and it can substitute for everything else. And I just love the vibe of that. And then Numite, my palm stone here. Numite is said to be the oldest stone on the planet. Um, this is something I work with pretty much all the time, but I'm going to be doing some ancestral work for a few of my clients, and I'm going to use this to help me tap in to that energy. Let's see, what else do I have here? Okay, so, Moon in Scorpio. You may be feeling extra sexy. I'm just saying that, okay? Moon in Scorpio encourages you to have an attitude. And don't leave home without it. Notice the black boots and the spiked heels. Edgy versus frivolous attire, okay? Um, you may be feeling both unusually curious and unusually private. We learn from intensity, depth, and power. Sexuality can be potent, musky. Our feelings may be so strong that we don't put them into words. Unspoken messages come hither or stay away. Echo through our body language. Eyes, flash, tails, twitch, temper, passion, or bored indifference reflect in our movements. Okay, It can feel safer to think of sex rather than affection. We may need as much time alone as we do in connection. So don't take it personally if someone that you're close to wants to just be in their cave for a little bit. You, you are encouraged to drop beneath the mental chatter between tossing the wings of emotion and down into the deepest wells of yourself. Okay, so drop beneath the mental chatter. You know, turn off that stuff going on here and go a little bit deeper. Dive deep. Under the Scorpio moon, we focus easily. We can either obsess productively about our work or we can torturously obsess about some emotional conundrum. See? Where we are right now, I know a lot of people are feeling very emotional about things that have been going on. Let's get productive, okay? It's up to us. Direct this unusual, durable concentration away from the obsession and towards creation. Perform surgery, prune the deadwood, and eliminate waste. 
the Scorpio moon weaves the visible and invisible worlds together. Explore metaphysical ideas and paranormal phenomena. Investigate family history and talk to the ancestors. Take time alone to hear your own soul and meditate. All right? So, my guidebook, Moonology. Now, you don't have to be an astrologer to read this book. This is more than just a beginning, a beginner's book, okay? It goes in depth because it has you figure out or understand or learn or discern where the moons fall into particular houses of your chart and how to work with it at that time. And as I said, right now, the new moon fell into my third house. The Libra new moon fell into my third house, and that's known as my communication zone. So, because the new moon fell into my third house, it was all about communicating, listening, and talking. My communication skills, um, spending time with my siblings. I'm to expect a very busy month. What to wish for. The ability to express myself clearly and get my message across. And I hope I'm doing that with you guys. What to visualize. Hugging someone. The only person I want to hug right now is Winston Duke. Okay. Um, an idea to keep in mind. Am I speaking my truth? If not, why am I covering up? And so I'm being encouraged to, during this moon cycle, to explore this idea this month and be rigorously honest with myself and others without being cruel, of course. Last night, two of my co-workers told me that I was intimidating, so I had asked them to give me instances or what makes me intimidating and it's not intentional I'm just the type of person who likes to get things done you know I am very clear in what it is I want to achieve and so I just say let's get it going that's all um, so the message is here. Um, it's time to brush up my powers of communication. How well am I doing at getting my message across? Um, it's important for me to express myself and my desires clearly. And of course, you have a meditation and then things that you can do, you know, public speaking course, read books that I've got stacked up. And boy, do I have a lot. Affirmations. Um, she talks here about uh, bergamot oil for me. It's very useful to oil the wheels of communication and she says for me to use it at this new moon and for the coming four weeks in my bath and a burner on my body. Numerological energy is three which is about creativity and expression and so the energy of this number is about the way we enjoy life when we are fully expressed and it just flows. She also talks about the chakras that it works with. The 3D chakra, which is the throat chakra, and the 5D chakra, which is the sacral chakra. Um, and then you can go in, goes even further, to archangels, if that's what you work with, and Sarasvati, the Hindu goddess. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I would suggest getting this book by Yasmin Boland and working with it. So, today, here's another book that I'm working with. I have a stack of astrological-based books here. So, it's Wednesday, October 10th. Mercury enters Scorpio. Mercury opposite Uranus. Unexpected news or developments may arise. You'll feel more attuned to your instincts, emotions, and desires over the coming weeks. You may even surprise yourself with some of your insights. A good time to communicate deep emotions, but avoid being super intense. And that's what I did at the beginning of the video. And I hope I got across what I wanted to get across. Let me take a look and make sure that I'm not. Okay. So, let me just give you a few of the books. Let me show you the stack of books that I have here. Yeah. These are the books that I'm working with. I am bound and determined to put together my chart. I've had 
my chart done per se, but I want to delve a little bit deeper during this lunar experiment and just see who I am, what I'm about, what am I missing, what should I be tuning into. Um, <clears throat> as you know, I'm coming down with something. I wonder what Louise Hayes has to say about being congested. Hold on, let me get that book and see if it's in there. Okay, I'm back. I got Louise Hayes' book, you know, because it's been about four years, I think, since I've been sick. I Okay, so, you know, I have fibromyalgia and all that, but I think it's been about four years since I've had a cold. And the only thing that's problematic is this congestion here, you know? Um, so I looked up, let's see, congestion. See, bronchitis, colds, influenza. I don't think I have that. Then you have here, nose, and she breaks, breaks it down. Bleeds, runny, and stuffy. Not recognizing the self-worth. Hmm. So the mantra is, I love and appreciate myself. Well, yeah, that I do. I do recognize my self-worth. Let's see what else we have here. Influenza. Uh, nope. Response to mass negativity and beliefs. Maybe. I don't know. Be interesting for me to see this. Uh, go in and take a look at this here. I don't have bronchitis. Not in my, my chest. It's really just in my head. Let's see. Do we have head cold or anything like that? Headaches? No. Nope, I don't have a headache. I'm going to go a little further. With this I don't know anyone else work with this book let me know so before I go let's do a quick spread using the Queen of the Moon Oracle just to do a check-in see where we are within without an advice uh, for this cresting moon in Scorpio and then I'll be back we'll do another checkup because I bought a binder and I've got um, inserts. You know, everything's so cool. I'm ready to set up my whole Moonology book. So one of the things I learned last month in doing this experiment is that I am unorganized. I am unorganized, okay? I tend to uh, put out fires as they erupt. I am so busy that uh, it's hard for me to get myself in a good rhythm. But I'm getting there. I'm clearing away some things. I'm moving things out of my house. Um, I need room. I need space. Not just physical space, but, you know, etheric space, auric space, something. I'm releasing some things. And maybe that's the reason why this is happening. Um, Okay, so for this moon cycle, cresting moon in Scorpio, you know, she's waxing. What advice does Mama Moon have for us? The advice she has for us. Within. <laughs> wow. Okay, did that without and the advice oh okay so within we have the egg moon and it's about trust so within we trust ourselves and we should trust that we are protected and taken care of in spite of what's going on that we are truly going to be looked after and taken care of. You know, she is 
sitting in Mother Earth in an egg um, and outside sources, outside forces, whatever it is you believe in, something much greater, more potent, more powerful than yourself is taking care of you. You know, sometimes we as human beings, we have to step back and get out of this notion, this place that we can do it all, that we have control. Okay? And without the blue moon and the, the unexpected, so expect the unexpected. Do you see that crackling energy? And what did I say about this moon in Scorpio? What is it I just read in this astrology diary here? It says... Unexpected news or developments may arise. I'm excited about the potential of what awaits when we walk through this portal. Can you see that without all that glare? Is this better on this side? Oh, that's better. Um, let me hold up the other one again so that you can see that. Trust. <sighs> it says fog moon. So even though, you know, things aren't really clear right now, maybe you don't need to see, uh, what can I say, the third and fourth and fifth step. Just look at the first step and trust that the other steps are there. Trust that you're taken care of when you're, you're most vulnerable right now then you're going to be okay. And of course, the blue moon, the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Uh, when you least expect it, expect it. Something is opening up. Something is presenting itself. The portal is opening. The way is being shown. You know, there's the crackle of energy, energetic potentiality is being experienced. You know, we need to be excited, um, ready to move forward to new beginnings, new ideas, new thoughts, new feelings. I love this. Without, there's so much going on around us. <sighs> Any advice? Abundance. Recognize that we are blessed with so much. We're surrounded by so much that we also need to be in that place of gratitude as well. You know, taking care of what we have, saying thank you and peace and blessings and just really trying to be at that place of humbleness and stillness and gratitude. We have so much. The fact that I am coming to you from this electronic device that our ancestors may or may not have perceived thousands and thousands of years ago is a blessing. The fact that I can come and talk to you like this as though I'm in your living room or you're in my living room face to face is a blessing to me. So one of the other things that I want to do, I'm going to sign off here. I'm going to say goodbye. But I'm going to come back with another video. Um, Try to get a, some of these done. But that's it for now. You know, doing a, a new moon check-in. Um, this cold has got me fumbling. But one of the things that I want to do, a couple of things, ideas that I have. <clears throat> I want to start showing some independent decks that I invest in. Um, the artwork is beautiful. Granted, they may not be decks for everybody, but I want to share what I have and what I know with you guys, just as you share with the rest of us. Maybe you're not aware. Um, maybe you don't know how to ask, or maybe you don't know how to approach or open yourself up. But this is an independent artist, so I'm going to do a little walkthrough of this deck. Let me know how you feel about that. Okay. I'm going to show you a piece of artwork that she sent to me. Is that gorgeous or what? Yes? Yeah. I 
thought you'd like that. And then, upcoming video, maybe I'll do it this weekend. Let's discuss this word. Yeah, I think it's time that we, I, have a little discussion. Let's talk about this word and what it means and why it causes so much disruption or shakeup or um, so much, so much. Anyway, we're going to get back to that. So with that, I am going to say Odabo, which is Yoruba for goodbye. <laughs>